that father we thank you very much tonight for another privilege that we have to come to your house lord may it never become a routine to us may it always be with freshness of expectation that we might receive a fresh experience anytime we're in the house of the lord accept O oh lord we pray our praise offering that of our pulses that of our lips O oh god may they never be a stench before you may they receive your blessings and lord in turn we want you to come by lord in your own manner may you bring the bread of life may you give us things that will take us deeper in your love give us things that will take us higher in your joy let there be a surround of the holy spirit move among this audience almighty god but please don't pass no one by may you stop at the post of each person and grant to us the substance of our request and of our desire we yield ourselves to your grace this day to your unction to your inspiration O god and to your blessings use us as thou pleasest let it be you speaking through us let it be you hearing through us let it be you doing through our instrumentality bless your people bless the saints in the hookup also bless those uh, who will not be able to make it but their art is right with us and those who on their way may you make a way for them other places where your children are gathering tonight in every local assembly may your unfailing presence that we believe is among us also be with them do these things beyond our asking as we commit ourselves and this time into your care in the name of the lord jesus christ amen amen god bless you saints thank you uh, okay let's just take our scripture so you can sit down and uh, and sit down well if you have your bibles with you matthew 24 35 matthew 24 35 that's brother abe's favorite scripture all right maybe i will just hand the mic over to him to give us some favorite blessings and pronouncements then I may had one or two things. Is it a deal? It's laughing. It's not dealing with me. All right. Matthew 24, verse 35. <clears throat> Our Lord says, Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. May the Lord add his blessings to the reading of his holy word. God bless you. You may be seated. We'd like to thank the Lord tonight for making it possible for us to be back in the house of the Lord. I trust that all is well with you all. And uh, all went well with me also in the meetings in Ghana. The journey was very okay. And uh, <clears throat> thank you. The meetings were greatly blessed. It's just that they were demanding. Amen. We had uh, five services. Uh, Friday, one on Friday, two on Saturday, two on Sunday. And uh, with a congregation like theirs, uh, they will pull you till you, are, till you drop <laughs> on Sunday night when I stopped more than seven minutes I rushed to the pulpit and said I must continue because it's a convention and uh, I said no I can't continue <laughs> I said it's not from tiredness it's because God wanted me to stop about seven of them were in the pulpit it was a drama <laughs> for a while said no you must continue I said no I can't continue this is where God wants me to stop eventually they had to agree uh, for me to to stop I said if God asked me to stop I wouldn't have stopped but he wanted me to stop and uh, 
even if you are 20 here you won't make me continue <laughs> where God asked me to stop amen I didn't stop not because uh, I've exhausted all I needed to say but I believe God uh, saw that we had a climax and uh, in a few seconds the reason became clear before you know it as they were leaving a lot of the congregation were on the altar and uh, there the, some tough cases came like a liver case the man was so jaundiced as you see now <laughs> because these brethren went into prayer into praises for close to another hour they didn't realize I said so if I've taken that one more hour you will see how far I will have gone then they brought that case and uh, the Lord was very gracious we prayed for the man and uh, they brought him from the hospital and then we prayed for him they said the liver is badly affected and I said Lord even if the liver is gone if you have not determined for this man to go you can repair it or you can replace it and I said Lord you know the state you do what no other power can do on Tuesday yesterday morning we were going to the airport the brother who called was just shouting hallelujah, hallelujah. he said for the first time the man who hadn't slept for days always in pain he said after the Sunday night they wheeled him back to the hospital and uh, by Monday morning that he slept for the first time in several months until the doctors had to wake him up and uh, when they get up he felt no pain no nothing and they waited all Monday they waited all Monday just to be sure by Tuesday morning it was the same thing so the man who were on the way to the airport they were going to drop me the brother called and was shouting and praising you know speaking in a lot of Ghana speaking in tongues. <laughs> So I was wondering, I said, this man was rejoicing. So the pastor told me, he said, You remember the man with the liver problem? That's the testimony they are giving. And I said, Ah, the Lord will perfect you to the end. So we're not talking. I said, I don't know, maybe it's a repair or a replacement. But I asked for he I asked for any of them that the Lord didn't fit, and I know that the Lord will perfect that. So thank you all for your prayers. Amen. The meeting brought a lot of people to God. It brought them to God. It brought many to repentance. And it gave healing to as many as needed it. So the Lord bless you. Thank you for your prayers. Amen. Amen. So tonight, for a little time of encouragement, I want to speak on the immutability of God's word. Amen. It's a prayer meeting. Jesus, our Lord himself here said, heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. No man could have made a statement like this. Because when men speaks, when men speak, they speak with a with a provision or probability. That's the right word. That is why our language as mortals is if God permits. Amen. And you must learn to speak like that. You know that's what the Bible said. The book of James said, you that will say, tomorrow I will go and do this, I will go and do that. Uh, you may be speaking out of faith. But he said, let it always come like this. If the Lord permits. Or at least by the grace of God. Because in ourselves, by ourselves, we can do nothing. But through him, we can do all things. But here we are looking at a man. I just want to see the difference in a pronouncement. We are looking at 
a man let me use that word man for a minute who spoke here and he spoke beyond the limit or the ability of a man because even the ones that we speak the bible said you speak God will perform so meaning that even when we utter things we don't have the capacity or the ability to bring it to pass you might think you achieve things you do things by the power of your resources it's a gross error amen is that tomorrow I will get this I will buy you this I will do that if that morrow comes and you are able to do it you did not do it by your power or by the ability of your resources you do it because the one who allows things to happen permitted it we have people who are wealthy who will make promises to do something the next week and guess what something happens that looks bigger than their wealth or looks bigger than what they could ignore or something happens that takes far the attention much more than anything else that they don't even have the time they are so suffocated by the pressure of that thing they couldn't meet up with this other one so at the end of the day it is only God who can speak and it will stand <coughs> This is why the Bible said there are many devices in the heart of man but the counsel of God is the only thing that will stand. So we see this God here saying heaven and earth will pass away. He said but my words. Meaning that there is nothing that can stand against the word. Meaning that there is nothing that can hinder his word. Meaning that there is nothing that can oppose his word. Meaning that there is nothing that can frustrate his word. <clears throat> Meaning that when God says yes, there is nothing on earth or in heaven or underneath the earth that can say no. Or reverse whatever God has determined to do or to say. How many agree with that? It said heaven and earth will pass away. But my words. It also shows the word of God has eternal quality. It also shows that the word of God cannot expire. It also shows that this word cannot fade away. Please take note of everything I'm saying. You will find it very useful. then it shows that the one who spoke has the unlimited capacity to bring his word to pass. Now, if I am in that one and I ask anything in line with his will, can I ever be hindered? We are coming. Can I ever fail? It's impossible to fail. Because you are in the one who cannot fail. Are you catching it? Now, this one we are talking about does not only hold himself responsible for what he says. He also holds himself responsible for what he thinks. Because saying proceeds from thinking. The prophet taught us that words are thoughts expressed. It is man that speaks before he thinks. But for God to be God, he has to think before he speaks. The reason sometimes we take our words back is because we speak out of excitement or out of pressure most times we don't process what we say (laughs) 
Yes. And that is why sometimes even our utterances look foolish to us. And you say, I shouldn't have said that. Or they will use a common slogan today, my bad. Or it is a slip of tongue. But God can never and has never had a slip of tongue. And he will never have a slip of tongue. He says only what he means. And he means what he says. Can you agree with me on that? You see, this will help you to take whatever God says seriously. Either to believe it for a blessing or to obey it also for a blessing. Whichever way you approach the word, it will end up in blessing to you. Because there are blessings in obedience. The reason some people don't take God's word seriously is because they think God doesn't exactly mean what he says. You make God a clown. It is a clown that makes comedy out of everything. Until even his own children will not believe him. They will say, Daddy, are you playing? Or you mean this one? But God doesn't play. If he opens his mouth, he had thought about what he wanted to say. Are you following me? This will help you to have a real attitude. Now, what I'm saying is that that thought he had, he hold himself responsible for it, even though you never, you don't hear his thought. Did you catch that? You don't know about his thought. But if he ever direct a thought towards you, he looks that one say, and look at you, and say, you see why I said you should take this thing up, bro. Give him more inspiration. Yes. It's his favorite scripture we are preaching on. He looks at you and say, I will do this for this brother. I will do this for this daughter of mine. Now, this brother, this daughter, this son or this daughter of God hasn't had what God says or what God thought. But you're not hearing it will not make God not do it. The prophet said, the thing to, for it to ever come into God's mind, it's already done. And let me tell you, God does not reconstruct his thinking. You must see why he is different from you and I. Do you understand? Because to reconstruct his thinking will mean that he's getting to understand or know better. Are you catching it? Maybe when he interacted with Bro Femi or Bro Samson, he realizes that he needs to make some amendment. Do you understand? I can do that. You can do that. Do you understand? And we do it all the time. And it does not make us lesser creature. It only makes us to understand we are human. Are you catching it? Because I will, I will take a decision with the best of information available to me. But the best of information available to me might not be all the information that is actually available. Or that is needed for that matter. So if uh, any of the brothers or even you a sister, you come around and I happen to be sharing that thought and you say, ah, sir, but you can... Uh, in fact, sometimes uh, something happened last week that is connected to this one. And this was what they said. This is I said, ah, I didn't realize that. What will I what will I go and do? I will go back again and do what a revision, re-editing, or reconstruction to my thoughts. And why am I doing the review? I want to get the blueprint right so that when I'm implementing implementing, if I'm not perfect, I'm near perfect. But you see, this is not God. God won't take counsel with himself. Not to talk of taking counsel with you. <laughs> Did you catch that? The one who had to swear by himself when there was nobody else. Greater than he can use. 
This is why the prophet said, Are his thoughts real? He said, His thoughts are as real as his word. Because once he thinks about it, church, listen to me. It takes care of the end. The end we're always talking about is the blending of eternity. Are you catching it? It takes care of it right from that beginning. So that as the year rolls by, the thought will remain relevant. How many prophecies as our Lord as our Lord gave concerning the end time? This Bible is older than our ancestors, the people we call ancestors. But it's still so relevant till today. Because this proceeded from the thought of God. Look at the message of the hour. What has the message said that is not still relevant to today? Amen. This was why I was teaching you the other day that it was God who came down. Some of us didn't get it. I said it was God who came down, isn't it? But it was Moses, Pharaoh saw. So Pharaoh was taking the words that was coming out of Moses as the words of Moses. If he realized that it was the word of a greater being, somebody more than Moses, somebody more than he himself, somebody who created all, maybe he would have struggled with God adding of his heart. You must know who had spoken. Because that is where reverence lays. So we are dealing with the one who thought of something. This is what I'm saying. If within my mind I'm looking at Brabashne, I said, ah, if we could get him a bigger trumpet. What's this called? Trumpet. Than this one. It would be nice. I will buy him a bigger trumpet. This thing you heard, I only thought of it. I didn't even think aloud. As they say, I thought within myself. Now, until I say it out, this brother will never know. And if he doesn't know, he cannot hold me responsible for what he does not know. Are we catching it? So I can feel a sense of no obligation. If I find out tomorrow I'm not able to do it, I will say, thank God, I've not even said it. Are you catching it? That is man. Dara is laughing. So I'm giving you an escape route. If you plan to do something, don't say it immediately until you are sure. (laughs) Amen. But look at God. If it was God, who thought the same as I did? What I'm saying tonight is that he makes himself obligated. Whether Brabashni knows it or he does not know it, God holds himself responsible that compulsorily, essentially, without fail, the trumpet must come. Now, question. Is he not different from me? Is he not different from me? Now, you watch that same God. He always does not keep it as a thought. He will express it. And if he express it, he will tell Brabashni, from the day you heard it, go and be testifying that I have done it. You know, the testimony will make it impossible for him not to do it. He says, some of us will say, I will, not, I will not testify, I will let it. The testimony will make it impossible. He has not done it, oh. But he has now expressed it. And he said, be testifying. That is why the weak will say, I am strong. You are not telling lies. Amen. Because in every situation, there must be something to confess. It's either you confess your condition, or you confess the position God has put you. His position for you is his watch. His condition is where Satan gets you. If you say you are weak, you are confessing something. If you say you are strong, you are also confessing. And your body must obey a particular confession. So we don't tell lies. When we refuse to confess our condition, we are only proving ourselves as seeds of Abraham. Because that was what our father did. Brother Abraham said, I can see Abraham went to the market. 
Amen. Don't think some of those things are just analysis. Amen. You don't know a prophet when it's coming, when it's coming, going into a channel and coming out of channel. One day he said, I saw Adam as he was walking in the garden. You might think that is impossible, but it's the most possible thing for a prophet. Do you know Moses never existed when creation started? How come he was able to tell you in the beginning? This and this happened, and you believe it. Have you ever thought of it? The prophets said, God will take them back to the beginning and show them the cause of everything. When Job said, I know my Redeemer liveth, it wasn't a faith confession, it was declaring what he was saying. And if you don't believe it, that, what will you do with John the Revelator? The man we call the Revelator, I mean, just, you know, to describe him, of the book of Revelation. He saw today. He saw many days. Does he live here? As today happened then, God took him back to this day. Amen. So for you to know how powerful God is, that whatever is happening now or will happen is all within his care. That is why he can say heaven and that will pass away because God speaks from an informed point of view. Yesterday was in his care. Today is in his care. Tomorrow, the future is all in his hands. So he said, go and be testifying. And yet, you have not seen it. He said, but be testifying. In my own case, I will, even if I manage to tell you, I will say, keep it to yourself. That is human. Isn't it? Because I said, don't don't launch me everywhere. Because what if I am not able to? You know, I will still be making provision. What if I'm not able to let people not think I'm a bad person? But God is not afraid to stake His reputation. Are you connecting with that? I'm trying to give you faith in an unconscious way to hold on to any promise of God. God is not afraid Amen. to stake his reputation. Amen. I found a misplacement. I think I've shared it before. The man who made promise is not afraid of his word coming to pass. The man to whom promise is made is afraid for the man who made promise. Are you catching it? Bro, George, I will buy you a shirt. I've made a promise. Is that right? Okay. Who should be worried to keep his word? Are you sure? In many cases, it is brother George that worries. And that's you and I. You said it should be me. Now, me that made the promise, I'm going about as if nothing. And yet, it is my own reputation that is at stake. If I fail to keep my word, even if Bro George did not tell every other person, Bro George as a loan in enough is enough to dent my reputation. All he needed to do, if I'm talking when they say, don't mind the uh, people like this, that's the way they talk. They will say things they cannot do. And the rest will become interested. Hey, what is that thing? He will tell them. He told me we buy a shuttle. Till today, now this is 10 years on. And it's even acting along as if he didn't say anything. As my reputation not finished. So I, the one who made the promise, should be the one worrying. Is that right? Yes. To be sure that I do not destroy my integrity before him. If I now told the same man, I said, Bro George, don't keep this thing I told you to yourself. Oh. Tell everybody I will buy you a shirt. Sing it. Crow it about. And Brother George will come one day, wants to ring sing special number. He said, Thank God for me. My brother promised to buy me a shirt. Hey, Brother Dele said you buy me a shirt. Church, don't you appreciate Brother Dele for me? They appreciate The shirt has not come. If I was sitting there, what will happen? Is it not making it much more difficult for me not to keep my word? It means I must keep that word if I have to sell my shoe to buy a shirt. That is exactly the way it is between you and God. If you hold onto any promise, you are staking the reputation of God. When believer can say, Lord, you said this. 
And I said amen to it. And I accept it as mine. I will testify about it. Because I know your word cannot fail. You keep your word. You even remind him several times he has kept his word. What are you doing? You are anointing God to go into action. God doesn't see it as an embarrassment. He sees it as a provocation unto good works. And he will do it. I have told this church, I said, let it settle in your heart. There is nothing God cannot do. Amen? Do you see, agree with me on that? He may choose not to do certain things, but not because he cannot do it. Amen? Because we are a church that respects the sovereignty of God in everything. When you understand those things by revelation, you will never come with why me or why will this have to happen. A lot of us run into crisis with that. And God seemed unmoved. He just keep going on. Because he wants you to be a solid, balanced Christian. Brother Abraham said, if I pray for 500 people tonight, even with the gift of divine healing, and if by tomorrow the old 500 are dead, he said, last night, I'll be preaching divine healing. Because I know it's not because God cannot heal them. He may choose not to do it. He may have a purpose not to do it. Are you catching it, church? So this is the one we're talking about. He said, heaven and earth will pass. My word will never fail. Do we believe that tonight? I'm talking of somebody who spoke when Ahab converted Naboth's vineyard. Do you remember the story? He said, the same place where you people shed the blood of Naboth. He spoke through his messenger. He said, blood will lick yours at the same place. Dog, sorry, will lick your blood at the same place. Heaven and earth will pass away. Do you know for you to know that it wasn't Elijah who spoke? Elijah passed away himself before the fulfillment of that word. But Elijah passed away, but what he declared did not pass away. So the fulfillment of a prophecy does not depend on the existence of the prophet or the man whom God used to express it. Amen. I'm sure when Elijah died, or no, he didn't die, sorry, when Elijah was taken up to glory, the family of Ahab will have thrown a party. That Eh? Okay. 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 He wa- you see now? Elijah was even still around. But he was off the scene, maybe in the background. Praise God. Now, okay, so let me leave that aspect. But there were many other things he spoke that came to pass at his passage. Now, there, like the coming to power of Azahel and this, uh, the, the execution of the judgment over the generation of Ahab through Jehu and Elisha. Elisha never saw that. When he went, these people will have thrown a party to say that, oh, the man, the prophet of doom is gone. Did you get it? But for you to know that it wasn't the words of a man. The one who spoke here looked like a flesh. But that was the fullness of God dead bodily. That is why even the Pharisees said never a man spoke. Because he spoke as, as one with authority. The kind of speeches they had from him was beyond human vocabulary. Human level. He told them Lazarus slept. You know when they didn't get it, he condescended. To the language of man. That's the one we are dealing with. That's the man who is above all circumstances. Amen. He said by that place, the blood will leak, the dog will leak. And they were watching. When the hour for that word to come to pass came, Brother Brown said, anytime God speaks, he allocates a power behind it. 
all the promises that you are reading in the Bible, there is a power behind those promises. The same power that conditions the fish to live in the water, to sleep in the water, and not drown, to eat in the water, that keeps the bird in the hair. Amen. And has never had a crash. My. That same power that makes corn to remain corn, that established the law of planting, cultivation, sowing, and reaping. And it is still happening till today. Till tomorrow, it will still be happening. Amen. That same power is behind every word. I think believers should be the easiest to accept the word. Just look at it. I'm still, we are still planting and they are still coming up. The word spoke it and the power ensures it. Brother Bram said the power ensures the word to come to pass all the time. That same power is behind every statement. When the hour for that word to come to pass, somebody must be asked to deceive Ahab. When those things were happening, people did not realize. You see, it is when they happened, the Bible will say that it might be fulfilled. That which was spoken. They couldn't find anybody to do it. A lying spirit came. He said, I will do the job. God said, thumbs up. Go ahead. And they gave him the prosperity. And they went to do the job. Praise God. And, you know, Ahab thought he could be smarter than that word. When they were to go for the battle, he decided to donate Jehoshaphat to battle. He said, you dress as a king. Yes, he was donating him. It is 20th. It, it is sorcery. It is sorcery. <laughs> The prophet said the real wizards are on the pulpit. Yeah, the real witches and wizards. You don't know. If you get somebody who can manipulate you to do, to believe and do contrary, is wizardry. You want a scripture for it? I have scripture. When the Galatians were taken away from the world, how did Apostle Paul describe it? Give me the scripture. He said, who had bewitched you? It's a bewitching. Some of you, you stay here for how many years? Even before you were born, inside the womb, they've been bringing you to family altar. Are you here with me? They've been bringing you to family altar. You were born from family altar. When you started growing, yeah, all of you. Yes. When you started, when you started growing, they will bring you to Sunday school. You grow beyond the junior Sunday school. I mean, what do you call it? They bring you to the teenager. You start okay. You start adults on the school, and you become even a regular brethren in the church. The the day you go to campus, it doesn't take two weeks for somebody to manipulate you to throw down all the values you have kept for years, and you tell me that that's not bewitching. That is what the Bible called bewitching. All these witches and wizards you are running about. Some of it are pure manipulations. They will tell you somebody is rich in one world. And yet, he has an abject poverty that if you have good money, you will take him to market to change his clothes. And they are telling him he's rich in one world. The riches of a world that you cannot bring to real life is another bewitching. And Facebook is trying to bewitch you again now. Yeah. All of you who are computer scientists, please come and educate us about that bewitching. If you yourself don't get bewitched, you won't even be bewitched by the grace of God. Because we got the father of all spirits. If you have the Holy Ghost, you are a father to witch. It's because you don't know who you are. How can a man have the Holy Ghost and be running from the little, little children? Break into their meeting and say, you people are doing child's play. Get out of that place. Yes, sir. Didn't the Bible call God Father of all spirits? So which spirit can challenge him? 
So if I have a portion of that father in me, or you don't know Holy Ghost is a portion of him, let me celebrate the Holy Ghost for you. The prophet said, what Jesus our Lord had in fullness, you have in a portion. But even though it is a portion, the content is the same. In a measure. The potency is the same. That is why today, if you believe, you can lay hands upon the sick, and they will what? Recover. You can cast out demons. Why will you be able to cast out a demon? Because you are more superior. You, are, you have inside you the father of that spirit. That he must obey. Sons and daughters of God. These are the blessings we live in. We live far above principalities and powers. We don't live in the realm of prejudice, in the realm of malice, in the realm of bitterness, in the realm of all these things, fornication, adultery. We live far above it. Far above principalities and powers. That is our domain, church. We are too ahead of them to bother us. When they make noise like little children and say, what are you doing out there? Get out of that place, my friend. And don't disturb me. But today, because we lost our principles of who we are, we are giving prominence to things that are insignificant in the kingdom that we live in. Do you know what the prophet said? He said, look at how God value you. And look at how God demean demons. He said, when he casts out demons, what does he do? He used finger. Get out of here. He said, but you are too great to even be carried with a finger. He gave you his shoulder. The strongest part of his body. Because you have weight in his heart. Oh, man. Oh, may God help us. Am I making it complicated? This is who you and I are. So, Ahab wanted to donate Jehoshaphat because he bewitched the guy. You said he did bewitch him. He bewitched him. If you are a Christian who likes compromise, you will easily be bewitched. If you are a Christian who doesn't take God's word seriously, you are open to bewitchment. Jehoshaphat was the one. He made outstanding statement in the palace of Ahab. Maybe you have not read it. After 400 prophets prophesied, what did Jehoshaphat ask for? He said, is there no prophet of God? What was he saying? It means that all these ones are prophets of Ahab. Read your Bible, it's there. It defined the kind of prophet he wanted. 400 prophets have spoken. He still didn't find the prophet of God among them. He said, is there no prophet of God that we can consult? Meaning that these ones are prophets of Ahab, but I want to hear from the prophet of God. Whether Ahab understood it or not, he answered correctly. He said, There is one. <laughs> ah, ah, ah. You be the only one left in that environment. If every one of them turn to Ahab in campus, you turn to God. Stand out, be the standard. Because you've gotten a lot to equip you to be the standard. Look, wherever you go, affect the place positively. So that when you look back, you will never regret. You will thank God for passing that way. And generations will praise you. Because your testimonies will be an effect. They brought him prophet of God. He said, there is one. But I watch. So that tells you Ahab is not ready to even be a Christian. They asked him, is there no prophet of God? He said, there is a prophet of God. I, how can you hate the prophet of God? How many of you hate the servants of God? Raise your hand. So that we shall start, so that we can be sure. We can start from you. We want to pray for you. Uh, we can use this whole night to pray for you because you are a dangerous... <laughs> You are a destructive. He's as serious as that. He said, I hate him. Okay. Joseph has said, let not the king say so. You hate the prophet of God. He said, it doesn't speak well of me. And the prophet said, what good can we speak of this last day's generation? He said, God has already prophesied cause. He said, you want us to reverse it and prophesy? Uh-uh. 
Just because you don't want to be called prophet of doom. Call me one, brother. There's nothing good that will come here. Amen. Prices are crashing every day. Are they not crashing? Those of us who have procrastinated things to do, are we getting better? Aha. Even this roof, let's start from here. This roof, before the government stopped us and COVID entered, we were rejecting we were rejecting 1.9 invoice. Yes, bro, the man said, who? We rejected, we said, go back. We can't pay more than 1.5. We are begging now to pay over 3 million. Yes, we were begging. To, what you are seeing is a little over 3 million. We were begging to pay over 3 million for the, for the thing now. And this is how prices will be going. So if you've got anything meaningful to do, you better start. Is a pastor tell us all will be well in the kingdom of God? All will be well, and all is well. <laughs> but for Nigeria, I don't know what to tell you. Let me tell you one good thing: even if it becomes ten million, you will do it. You know why? Because our economy is not governed. I've told you before. We live in the secret place of the Most High. Our economy is not governed by the circumstance of the nation we are living in or this earth. Our economy is governed from above. The one who owns our economy defy economies all the time. In Syria and in Israel, there was famine until people were eating each other's children. Amen. And in frustration, the king ran to the prophet. Amen. It was in frustration because he thought the solution was the problem. In other words, why would the prophet be existing and this will be befalling us? Nobody asked themselves what brought us here. Because everything you hold the clergy responsible. Even if it is your own failure. You say you should have seen my failure. You should have blocked me from failing. So, the man said, go tell that guy. Go tell him by this time tomorrow. <laughs> a bag of rice, 50 kg. How much do they sell it now? 28, 34, 35, depending on the time. Now, this prophet said, by this time tomorrow, it will be sold for 2,000 naira. All of you say, here. Yeah. That was, they sell more than this that day. But can just hear the Lord faith. Heaven and earth will pass away. No matter how ridiculous it sounds to your ear. One of the World Bank economists advisor to the president. <laughs> he said, he said, he said, he said, he said, looking at the metrics, the measurements, the performance index, the history, and the topography of economy. Economy is you people should talk now. <laughs> <laughs> looking at all indices international business what do you have to say to that looking at all indices it is absolutely impossible even the IMF will arrest a person who talk like that but did it happen that is God's kingdom defying the economies of the earth that one you can never learn it in any economist textbook it's not there. They will tell you change is gradual. But with God, change is instant. And God said, you are using your canary brain to measure my word. Uh, for, so that they won't report it to you in eternity. You will see it with your eyes. But you will never partake of it. We have seen people, when they were selling cars, 7,000, they couldn't buy when it became 2 million, they bought 2 in one day. <laughs> oh, sure. So, if they like, let them move it or whatever. As long as you keep close to this economy. That's the only secret. Oh. If you veer to the kingdom of the day, you get governed by the wicked men. Yeah. Amen. Because the fate of this earth is in the hand of wicked people. Lewd fellow of baser sorts. That's what the Bible said. But if you don't want your faith to be determined by them, come into Christ. 
Come into the kingdom of the son of prosperity. It will turn the tide for you. It will meet your needs. It will fight your battles. Amen. It's a promise. The Lord is my shepherd. How many has the Lord as their shepherd? What was the statement after that? I shall not I will not imagine how the needs will be met. But brother, it will be met. And it has always been met. I can testify of that. We've got a lot of wealth in reserve banks. In heavenly reserve banks. Hey, God might not entrust you with a lot of cash. But use the faith ATM whenever it's necessary. I've always said it as a principle, as a faith of life. That I may not have money stored somewhere. But whenever I have a need that is necessary, the Lord will always raise the standard. Up till tonight, I can't talk of tomorrow, he has never failed to raise the standard. And I know he will never fail. God bless you, bro. So, he said, Jehoshaphat, you dress like this. <laughs> Now, the Jehoshaphat bewitching, yeah. Jehoshaphat asked for a second opinion. He got the opinion, isn't it? The man of God came with a vindicated message. He said, I saw Israel scattered. He have said, you see what I'm saying? When Israel is scattered, it shows they have no shepherd. I am the shepherd I was missing. Yes. That was a plain interpretation. Now, he even gave the description of what happened in heaven to earth. How better could a sermon get or be preached in expository level? Brethren, what should Jehoshaphat have done when he had that? He should have said, Brother Ahab, God bless and be with you. This is my benizary. Isn't that what, what I mean, isn't that what you will do? You heard from God life. But Jehoshaphat was ready to sacrifice the word for a destructive friendship. It's a bewitching. You say it's a peer pressure. Making you throw your virtues away. Destroying your integrity. Your pride, your honor. All that you have heard for in values. Having had the pure word of God and you will tell me that's not bewitching it's a bewitching those are the witches and wizards you should run from your roommate, your cosmate, your classmate Sam you should run for that guy do you know do you know do you know a cosmate also is, is proposing gay activity to this boy at what age are you seeing how terrible the world has become? Look, if you go for those things, it's not because you did not hear. You did not know better. That is where the bewitching comes. Jehoshaphat against the better understanding of the world. Yes, sir. Chose to go that way. Have not the faith of our Lord Jesus Christ with respect of persons. Are you hearing me? It will help all of us. Because I told you, I said, there is blessing in obedience and there is blessing in believing. Anyhow, the man said, you, will you still go with me? He said, your people are my people, your God is my God. <laughs> and he said, I'm not done with this guy yet. Dressed like a king. Don't forget, the Bible said the children of this world are what? Shall we even use the word wise? Cunning, subtle. The serpent was more subtle above all generation of subtility. Satan's madness. Amen. 
goats. They will lead you to the guillotine. They will jump over the fence. But you will enter into the guillotine. And your neck will be out. Choose your friendship. Choose the word. Above anybody. This world is not a friend to grace. Nothing will suffer if you don't have friends. Of this world. Nothing will suffer. But everything will suffer if you don't have Christ. Praise God. So he put Jehoshaphat for a target. They got to the battle. Everybody was looking. God told them, don't kill any of my children. Your target is here. Everybody was looking for here. Nobody got here, brethren. All the sword was sharpened. The arrows were pointed, needle sharp, for only one man. So when all these armies of Israel, they are trying to say, just get out of the way, we don't need you. Where is your king? And the man has this guy. So, <laughs> so I showed them. While they were looking for the king, they saw a man dressed as king. And it was actually king. King Jehoshaphat. The Sevla must be him. They went after him. Thank God he has one Christian virtue left. Cry unto the Lord. Some of you, you are still, you are still doing gentlemanly where you should cry unto the Lord. You are very psychedelic. Do you know what we take over? Where you should speak and open up sleep, we slay you there. When God is passing by, he's not, he's a, he, what do you say? Pass me not to gentle table. Hear my muting. Is that the song? Hear my humble cry. Thank you, bro. Help me, Lord. When Bartimeo shouted, help me, son of David, have mercy upon me. Did he get attention? No? You are there doing psychedelic muting. He will pass you by. Amen. 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 And you know what will not pass you by? Those who are muted are always sleepy. Is it not true? They won't answer again. Only Brother Victor is honest now. He says it's true. Too muted on your knees there, you will sleep. It's only when you can't turn who are mute, you hardly find three who are doing heart to heart, maybe pouring. The other seven, they are dozing. Because sleep likes muting. And that is what will also not help you. When you are to worship the Lord, you are muting again. God understands the song in my heart. He wants to hear it from your mouth. He said, open your mouth and do what? Praise the Lord. That's what the book of Psalms said. If everybody is doing that, yeah. whose voice will go to God? Ah, uh-uh. ah. Clapping has even left us. You don't clap again. Do you know it's messagical to clap? The prophet call it, yes. God bless you. The prophet call it, <laughs> the prophet call it, uh-huh, you see now. Let's do this more in our worship. I showed you the clip of those who were really clapping. It is their life. They were not acting. When the presence of the Lord came down again yesterday, I need to show you some clips. So how will God not move in such? The prophet called clapping instrument of ten strings. Amen. Amen. In those environments, they don't even they don't even need drum. The clapping alone with the man on the piano in the spirit. Oh goodness, Malachi 4. May God help us all. <laughs> we are going to the same heaven. Amen. Now, if God is watching that, we all are in the service at the same time. Hmm? They are in service tonight as we are in service. In their worship, they were doing that. In your own, you are doing your own. Which one do you think will attract God's attention? Let's be honest. Now, you can't talk. Are you? Are you yes! Is that right? So you don't want yours to attract God's attention. Let's loosen up in his presence. 
So, the man cried, and when they examined him, he's not here. The battle was over. I want you to see the power of the words. When the battle was over, they blew the trumpet, everything was over. Ahab must have been celebrating the way he will deal with Micaiah. Ah! Micaiah, you shouldn't have come out. See your life now. He will maybe tell him, asking his Amobiara, shall we slice him into 12 tribes of Israel? Or we should just hang him publicly. What shall we do? Why they were thinking that? God who watches over his word. <laughs> he went he went to meet one Syrian soldier. He said, who did you bring this spear for? That man thought he was talking to himself. He said, I brought it for here. So where is the here? It's exactly the question we're asking ourselves. This guy played on our intelligence. He didn't come. So said, okay. Let's assume he didn't come. If you go back to your land with this spear, is it not a double load? Are there no more spears you can do? You can sharpen, you can make in your land. He said it's true. So you brought a spear, you didn't achieve your aim, and you will carry it back. That's double tragedy for a man. He said, ah, that makes sense. <laughs> so what should I do? If I were you, I would just throw it at a venture. I just look at this and just throw it there. Let it go so I can be free. So that makes a lot of sense. He threw it, and the angel of the Lord took it. Because only God can identify him. Heaven and earth will pass away. And when the spear was gathered to where Ahab was, God re echoed to him, Thus said the Lord, can never. Micaiah said, If you return, God has not spoken through me. So it wasn't Micaiah's statement. It was God speaking through Micaiah. Micaiah may pass away, but that which he spoke, heaven and earth will pass. Shall I give two more? You like that? Praise God. 800 years before the Messiah came, King David, under the Spirit, he saw him on the cross. And when he saw him, he saw him with two male factors. But he said, not one bone of his body shall be broken. It's in the book of Psalms. <laughs> and if a man thinks it was David who was speaking, what would be the attitude? In the course of years, 800 years, brethren, that should have been forgotten. But I tell you again tonight, when God speaks my brother, he puts a power behind it. If the word of God, if a promise is laying dormant, let's not waste resources of heaven. It's because there has been no faith pull to provoke it. Then one day, the Savior indeed went to the cross. <laughs> and you see, the scripture, Satan is conscious of many scriptural promises. This is why the prophet said, if he cannot do anything against the word, he attacks the people that the word is, made, is sent to. Because he knows, as long as he can get you to disbelieve, as powerful as that word is, it won't come to pass. This is why he pressures you into unbelief, into reasoning, into doubts. But not tonight. <laughs> So in the course of years, it looks as if that one has what? Faded. Then they told the Roman soldier, he told the Roman council, he said, let us make sure they are dead. They are already dead. Amen. Is bone breaking? Will bone breaking give the assurance that they are dead? I'm asking you. All they should have done is to have checked. But Satan has more intention than that. He wanted to break the scriptures. He wanted to disprove the scriptures. He thought that in the course of 800 years, God will have ignored the statements. This is what I'm telling you tonight. If Satan is not ignoring God's statement, how will the one who makes the statement ignore his statement? 
If Satan could remember that statement to attempt to destroy it, how much more the one who spoke? Friends, let's not shortchange ourselves. These promises don't expire. It's that the blood of Jesus Christ will not lose its power until the ransom church of the Lord will be saved to see no more. As long as there is still salvation, the blood is still atoning. As long as there's a blood atonement, the word is still powerful. It's still real. It's still alive. Oh, church. They picked the armors. Look, friends. Let's say these are the three crosses. If they start from here, Jesus will still be number two. If they start from here, Jesus will still be number two. But when they started, I started seeing the power of God turning things. They broke heavily the bones of the first thief. There's no scripture to protect his bone. So it was broken. But instead of coming to Jesus, they bypassed. And they came to the second one and they broke. Maybe they were determined to do that of Jesus with serious force and the bombardment. And when the guy came, as he carried his hammer like this, the carrying of the hammer is a provocation of the word. The power behind that word woke it up. And the word stood between Jesus and the hammer. Heaven and earth will pass away. The word said to the Roman soldier, I said, you are dumb to think you can break this. Check it, it's already dead. So what you need to know is that it's gone. You can't do this here. And he said, you know what? There will be a surgery that will be done. But not orthopedic traumatic surgery. There will be no bone breaking here. Amen. What we want to do surgery for is bet. So it's going to be by cesarean section. Go get a sharp pointed needle. So he took the spear instead of the hammer. He dropped the hammer and he went for his side. Left side right below his heart. Because the one coming, amen, he said don't go for his head. The one coming will not rule above him. Don't go for his feet. The one coming will not be trampled upon. Go for his side. The one coming is a product of love. Amen. Elect ladies. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. That will prove the motherhood of our Lord. You say, is he a mother? He's a mother. That's why it's called El Shaddai. El Shaddai is the breasted one. Do you describe man as a breasted one? No, sir. When you are describing the breasted one, you are talking of women. Amen. So if it's the breasted one, oh, the prophet said, what a wonderful thing to know. Amen. That what this breast is not just there for nothing. It's a breast that will nurse you. He said, when you are weary and fainting, come to the breast of your Savior. Amen. And take some suck and nurse yourself back to life. Amen. Children know where to go for suck. Mm. And God's children know where to go for suck. So, when they put the spear there, blood and water came out. Signifying what? Amen. What do our mama see? They see water. They see blood. Water will break and the blood will start flowing. Amen. And when you see that, what are you expecting? So, when those two things happen, what was going to come out? How many tell me who who was coming out? I thought you will all point to me now. Nah. You are supposed to be loving brethren. Hallelujah. You are right. All of us came out by that delivery. What prevented the bone breaking? Because there was word of God against it. There are so many word of God against certain things in our life. And the devil can never make us do it or bring it to pass in our lives because the word of God is against it. Same power power is behind the statement. He said, thy seed shall possess. If God be for us, then. Amen. So whoever presents himself as an enemy, 
the word of God is already against them. We will possess their gifts. He said, nothing shall by any means alter you. Is it the word of the Lord? He said, they shall surely gather. Amen. But the gathering is not by me. He said, so the communique of the gathering cannot stand. He said, every and the writing of ordinance against you, he has done what he has wiped out. No enchantment. No divination. Against this Israel. Isn't the reward of the Lord? The Lord shall supply all of my needs according to his riches in glory. He said in the world you will have tribulations. Oh God, so thank God when they come. He said, but be of good cheer. What has he done for us? He has overcome the world. Say, I'm the one who he led. He led. So you can have a continuous healing. A renewal of youth. And you can have a constant atonement. If you walk in the light, as he is in the light, the blood of Jesus Christ cleanseth us. It's a continuous cleansing. So if we go into snares, we'll come out of snares, we are cleansed. There is therefore now no to them who are in. So condemnators keep quiet. This is not your call. This is not your business. Fault finders, accusers of brethren, keep quiet. Find a better job to do. Because this Israel is justified. They are the delight of the Lord. He said you will have a goodly heritage. Friends, I can go on and on tonight. I haven't spoken of Peter and many more in the scriptures. But take this little and let the Lord blow it up in your heart. Do you feel good? Is your faith charged? Do you feel like saying something before God? Open your mouth and talk to him in your own way. It's impossible for whatever you put before him not to come to pass. The prophets say all I do sometimes is to raise the faith of the people. He did it in Grass Valley. He did it in Spokane, Washington. And by raising the faith of people, things began to take place in their lives. May that be your lot tonight. May you have a visitation like you have never had before. May you enjoy his favor. May you enjoy his arm reaching out to you in every situation, in every condition that you may find yourself tonight. You may be at the crossroad. Challenges and pressures may be suffocating you. It might be like you don't have anywhere to turn. But hold on to the word tonight. The promises can never fail. The word can never fail. It will come true for you. It will break the tempter's power. It will take away glooms. It will fill your life with glory. It will turn this around for better. We're present up in time of this. Oh God, rise unto the things to the situation of your people tonight. Oh God, move among us. Let there be a free flow of your mighty presence. 
to do great things in the lives of the believers. Arise unto our help. Arise unto our deliverance. Arise unto our salvation. Plead our cause, Almighty God, against every foot work of darkness. Give us faith that will rise to the channel, Lord. Faith. By faith, by faith, by 
live in Jesus, Jesus above. Jesus above. Trust in Christ. Confide, confide in His great love. In His great love. From all have said. We are saved. In His shelter. By faith, I feel no alarm. Shall we pray? Our most gracious Father, we thank you, Lord Jesus, tonight for your presence in our midst. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for your word. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for the blessings. Lord, your word has gone forth, O oh God. The purpose, Lord, for which you have sent it. You say to not return to you void, but to accomplish that purpose. Lord, the only thing that we desire when we came, O oh God, is that you will address our needs. And you have done that, O oh God. You have surpassed our expectation. We are going out, O oh God, in that mind. All the things that we've committed into your hands, O oh God, we know you've already done them. By the power of the words that are said, heaven and earth will pass away. But none of my word, an iota of my word, will not uh, but come to pass. Father, we are going in the power of that might tonight. Defeating all our foes. Bringing back, oh God, testimony to this effect in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, oh God, because the serv your servant tonight told us that even your thought, you hold yourself responsible for it. All those good thoughts, oh God, that you have towards us. Father, we want to come back and testify, oh God, to your goodness in our life. Do that for us and we shall be happy. Do that for us and we shall be glad. Thank you, Father, for answering our prayer. Lord, every place is where your children are connected tonight, oh God. The same blessing may they be extended to them in the name of Jesus. And we commit your servant into your hands, O oh God, who you have inspired to bring this word unto us, Lord. We can feel, O oh God, even from his voice, O oh God, Lord, that he needs your help. Father, may you help him in the name of Jesus. All that concerns him, Father, may you perfect in the name of Jesus. Where the shoes are pinching him, O oh God, may they be relieved in the name of Jesus Christ. May you anoint him the more, O oh God, to continue to pull down the kingdom of Satan. And your kingdom continue to be enthroned in the name of Jesus. Every plan and purpose of the enemy before him, may they continuously be defeated in the name of Jesus. His journey over the weekend is committed into your hands. Father, may you take preeminence in Jesus' name. All the activities, the wedding, the services that will take place, oh God, may it be to your glory in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father, for answering our prayer. We commit the rest of the saints into your hands, O God. May each and everyone be blessed in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father, for answering our prayer. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen.